Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. XRP Crypto Wolf bringing us this. Did you know XRP futures are now listed on major crypto exchange Poloniex? So yeah, you know, even despite the certainty with regards to crypto, I'm finding that a lot of these exchanges now are taking advantage. Uh, and I don't know if this is available for US traders or not, but XRP futures are now available on this major cryptocurrency exchange. XRP perpetual contracts have now seen a new listing on one of the world's oldest crypto exchanges, Poloniex. In a new tweet, Poloniex announced the listing of USDT margined XRP perpetual contracts. And so guys, here is the tweet to that effect. XRP perpetual futures is open for trading. And I will link this in the description if that is something uh, you guys are interested in. Last month, top US crypto exchange Coinbase announced the arrival of perpetual futures, including XRP for Coinbase advanced customers in eligible non-US jurisdiction. So uh, that was my thought too. Not sure if this is available for Americans, at least. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't use the Poloniex exchange. If somebody does use Poloniex, please do comment in the comment section or you can tag me over there on Twitter. I wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for posting that. Another one here from XRP Crypto Wolf, XRP Ledger scores integration on leading dApp store. So we're seeing the XRP Ledger uh, being integrated into more dApps, guys. XRP Ledger continues to gain new integrations. It has scored a new integration, the dApp radar, which describes itself as the world dApp store has announced the integration of the XRP Ledger. This move allows users to use DAP Radar to track DAPs uh, and NFT collections in XRP Ledger, allowing them to stay ahead of happenings in the ecosystem. And so uh, DAP Radar did just comment on that too. So I guess it'll be tracking uh, NFT collections uh, in the XRP ecosystem specifically. And NFTs, uh, who was it? I think it was Brad. Was it Brad or maybe it was David Schwartz? They were saying how, uh, how that has really increased over the last year. And I think we're really going to continue to see this uh, increase more and more as the years go on. XRP Ledger is continuing to gain new integrations. Uh, the day prior, Ripple announced Ripple Payments, a new version of the company's payment product. Among Ripple Payments offerings is the new integration with XRP Ledger's native decentralized exchange, which will strengthen global liquidity options for Ripple clients, uh, while also facilitating customer onboarding into new markets and boosting product performance. So all very enlightening news. Very good to see that, uh, you know, more integrations are happening. So again, wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for posting that. Wrath of Kahneman here bringing us some more information. New information with regards to Ripple partner Flutterwave. Guys, Flutterwave has just scored a new Malawi license. Flutterwave, Africa's leading payment technology company, has announced today that it has obtained official authorization to facilitate international remittances in Malawi. The international money license was uh, granted on Thursday, October the 19th, and will enable uh, payments across the process, uh, to, sorry, to process remittances from Malawians to other Africans sending money back home. According to the World Bank reports, global remittances are expected to grow 1.4% to $656 billion in 2023. And with millions of Malawians and Africans living and working abroad, uh, the issuance of the IMTO license per, uh, positions Flutterwave to effectively power remittances into Malawi. So Flutterwave, again, a Ripple partner, and now they are licensed, registered now to make these payments in this particular part of Africa. So this will ultimately boost economic growth, stabilize exchange rates, uh, enabling investment investments and infrastructure. So these are the other uh, ancillary, I guess, uh, outcomes when we, we happen to see something more efficient and effective move in. You know, if payments were never this robust in the past, obviously you wouldn't see economic growth. Obviously you wouldn't see, you know, innovation. You wouldn't see all those other things that follow. And now because of RippleNet technology through Flutterwave, we're probably going to see a bit of an economic burst over there in Malawi. Uh, through Flutterwave's cross-border remittance solution, SendApp, uh, residents in Malawi can now access benefits that include competitive rates, fast money transfers, user-friendly mobile apps and web platforms, and access to transact in 150 currencies, 24-7 customer support, and a strict adherence to the highest security and compliance standards, which protects them from fraud, scams, and other financial risks associated with international money transfers. So uh, there you have it, guys. Another Ripple partner making waves. Uh, as you guys can see here, this was uh, originally announced in October, but now it looks as though uh, they have finally received their license. So great news there. Looking forward to seeing those developments in Africa and wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. Switching gears a little bit, guys. I saw this from Eisenreich here on Twitter. VeChain has been featured in Coinbase's Learn program, opening doors to educate a vast user base about the ecosystem, sustainability initiatives, and more. So it seems as though we're getting a lot of VeChain news recently. Uh, the VeChain Thor blockchain has been featured in Coinbase's Learn program, opening doors to educate a vast user base about the ecosystem. As I mentioned, uh, this comes after the listing of its native token VET and the VTHO on Coinbase earlier this year. So looks as though now Coinbase is uh, getting very warm 
to VeChain and uh, those particular coins. The Learn campaign offered users the opportunity to earn VET rewards by completing educational quizzes and engaging with the VWorld mobile wallet. The campaign aims to enhance awareness and engagement with VeChain's groundbreaking, uh, groundbreaking proof of authority consensus mechanism, twin uh, token model, and enterprise use cases detailed in its Web3 for Better white paper developed in collaboration with the Boston Consulting Group. And so uh, you guys can see the VeChain uh, announcement down here. They're excited to share that VeChain is going to be collaborating with Coinbase onboarding 750,000 roughly to about a million users to VeChain Thor. So huge news here, guys. And uh, again, VeChain, I got to keep saying, you know, it's been one of those coins that has been part of my legacy portfolio, but also uh, I'm trading it with my patrons at patreon.com slash working money channel. It's one of the uh, 15 or so coins that I have in the $10,000 plus portfolio. And if you guys follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel, you'll see uh, how I've distributed that $10,000 amongst different types of coins. All kinds of coins now that, uh, I mean, still have not popped yet. So there is still opportunity to get in at some pretty good prices. A lot of these coins I purchased about six months ago when the market was uh, still not even at its all-time bottom. The market did depress a little bit. Now it's up a bit, but I still think there's tremendous opportunity there uh, just because of the types of metrics now that I'm looking at for these coins. Diversifying, making sure I'm not uh, putting all my eggs in one basket, so to speak. So again, if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, patreon.com slash working money channel. You can follow what I'm trading uh, you know, all to point out VeChain, another one of those coins, I've talked about it a lot on this channel, a double-edged sword coin, got the utility, but also very effective in terms of profit making. It's just one of those coins that tends to really move. I guess the price point is, uh, you know, low enough. Well, I mean, here, even if you bought VeChain at the end of 2020, which really wasn't even at the bottom, and uh, you sold it near all-time high, you almost made about 2,500% on your investment. And so VeChain is now uh, down in and around these prices Again, so uh, from even from here to the uh, former all-time high, we're at 1100%, 1150%. So VeChain, again, I love this coin for so many different reasons. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, the real world utility is kind of secondary. I love the way it moves. I'm going to be sharing my targets for VeChain and all the other cryptos, obviously, on uh, my Patreon for everybody. So something to think about if you want to uh, or if you do hold VeChain or are looking to diversify. Michael Branch here posting this as reported by Bloomberg. Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple has indicated the company's readiness to take its legal battle with the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission over the XRP cryptocurrency to the Supreme Court. So guys, we recently got some news yesterday. This particular statement emerged uh, during Brad Garlinghouse's interview with Bloomberg Television uh, during DC FinTech Week. And Bloomberg notes here, Ripple has incurred over $150 million in legal fees. Brad Garlinghouse was uh, transparent about that. The legal conflict has attracted considerable attention in the crypto community. It's definitely probably considered one of the biggest. Uh, and so what is happening now? If you guys didn't catch this morning's video, I did talk a little bit about Brad Garlinghouse and the crypto climate in the US. And is it going to need a new administration in order to get crypto up and running in the United States? If you guys didn't catch that, I'll link it up here. But here's a bit of a different situation, okay? According to Bloomberg, Garlinghouse emphasized Ripple's determination to continue the legal fight, though he did not exclude the possibility of settling the case in the future. Here's what Brad Garlinghouse told Bloomberg about the possibility of the case reaching the U.S. Supreme Court. He said, we'd love to see the Vegas odds on how that would go. We are in it until the end. And so, you know, $150 million, certainly not chump change, but, you know, Ripple is going to continue to forge ahead, of course. Uh, and I mean, it's great for XRP holders, great for the entire community, obviously. Here's what we recently got, uh, courtesy of James K. Filan here, XRP community here. He says, the parties have submitted to Judge Torres a proposed schedule regarding remedies, discovery, and briefing. So Brad saying they're in it till the end. Is a settlement on the table? Is this, does this mean we are seeing a settlement, guys? What's happening here? So the parties agree that permissible discovery will include facts occurring in the period before the filing of the SEC's complaint. The SEC proposes 90 days from the entry of the scheduling order by the court to conduct remedies related discoveries. Ripple is amenable to such uh, a proposal so long as the discovery is limited to pre complaint discovery. Uh, the SEC intends to seek certain discoveries that uh, post dates the complaint that it considers relevant to the claims, blah, blah, blah. The parties further agree. Let me just go down here. The parties further agree no later than 45 days after the entry of the scheduled ordering. Ripple may serve on the SEC a superseding version of the proposed report by Anthony uh, M. Baracco. 
And within 90 days of the scheduling order, the SEC may depose Mr. Bracco. So giving us some uh, more details here about what could have or what's likely to happen. The parties agree that the discovery shall not be served on third parties in this first instant, but reserve the right to seek leave from the court pursuant to Rule 45 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure uh, to serve third party discovery requests. Both parties also reserve the right to oppose any such request. Uh, the SEC may file its brief with respect to remedies at any time, but no later than 30 days after the remedy. So giving us uh, basically the time period there. And uh, this is just the last page here, signed off by George G. Tenriero. So here we have it, Fred Rispoli commenting, this is all tea leaf reading, but to me, this letter does not have the acerbic tone of most of the previous ones. So that's an interesting observation here from another uh, lawyer in the XRP community. The parties even agreed on some things. I continue to believe this case is closer to a resolution than the SEC is projecting. So settlement on the table. Does this mean there's a settlement? Are they going to settle XRP daily? Also commenting, the SEC and Ripple meet today with the intention of finding a remedy for Ripple's Section 5 violations, as I mentioned earlier, with respect to its institutional sales. If no resolution is found, both parties will request from the court that a briefing schedule is in place. Do you think there will be a settlement? So guys, these are all very, very good questions. Settlement, no settlement. It's going to be about those sales of XRP. Michael Branch commenting here, uh, the ongoing XRP lawsuit has entered its settlement phase and Judge Annalisa Torres has set the ground rules for Ripple and the SEC. So from the X post, James K. Filan shared the update as we saw earlier. And Judge Annalisa Torres, the presiding judge of the Southern District of New York, regarding the next phase of the XRP lawsuit, which involves remedies, discovery, and briefing. According to the SEC's letter to the federal judge, which was dated November the 9th, guys, so we just got this yesterday, both parties have decided that the permissible discovery in the settlement negotiation would encompass events that took place before the U.S. regulator filed the initial complaint against the crypto payment firm in connection to XRP. From there, the SEC is requesting a 90-day window from the point of entry of the scheduling order to enable it to conduct some discoveries that are related to remedies. Ripple, on the other hand, does not have any challenge with this proposal so long as it sticks to pre-complaint discovery, precisely. It is limiting uh, its consent to discoveries that are connected to only events that preceded the complaint from the SEC. So everything that happened before. The document stated clearly that the fintech firm still remains the authorization or still retains the authorization to oppose any post-complaint discoveries that may arise by the SEC. Eventually, Ripple may go as far as petitioning the court if it permits the SEC's proposal and the extension of deadlines. Additionally, Ripple was given 45 days from the entry of the scheduled order to uh, present a superseding report, uh, and again by Anthony Bracco, who testified earlier this year. So the SEC, uh, they are granted to depose more witnesses. Um, but, you know, as Fred Rispoli says, it doesn't sound like they, they have that fight in them anymore. Uh, you know, it's been a long case. They've lost. It's been uh, a disgrace, <laughs> right? So they got bigger fish to fry. Now, I think they're setting their sights on something new. I think they realize at this point, there's no sense in trying to go the distance and Ripple still is going to fight tooth and nail. So great for XRP holders, as I said, uh, in the next 90 days after the scheduling order, the SEC gets to depose Bracco based on permission uh, granted by the court, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in the long run, if any of such reports show up, Ripple reserves the right to object it as per Judge Torres. It is worth noting, though, that no third party discovery requests will be honored without receiving approval from the court. Uh, the schedule already points to the lengthy and bumpy road ahead. However, this aligns with prior projections from pro XRP lawyer John Dean, who believes that there will be a lot of back and forth that will ensue before a final settlement offering is reached. He believes $20 million lower settlement can be considered a 99.9% .9 success rate story for Ripple Labs. So that's what John Deaton was uh, projecting. And so, you know, is this essentially a settlement offer? Jeremy Hogan also commenting on this. This will be interesting as nothing less is at stake than the sovereign rights of foreign countries. The U.S. Supreme Court says that Ripple sales must have been in the U.S. or at least on a U.S. exchange. How is the SEC's experts going to get around that? So uh, something else that he pulled up from the uh, Morrison versus National Australian Bank case here. How are you going to prove American sales versus foreign sales? Very good question. And I think, uh, you know, if the SEC cannot prove this, they're going to have a heck of a time winning in court. Yassine Mubarak also saying, so no settlement. 
And Sherry down here saying, you know, the remedies phase is where parties settle on disgorgement and penalties. This is what we're in. We're in the remedies phase. So no settlement as of yet, but a true settlement where parties got to meet on equal negotiating terms ended the moment summary judgment was handed down. So could they settle on what Ripple gets to pay out before discovery? Sure. This means essentially that Ripple has already won on X, Y, and Z. And so at this point, it's not really a settlement. It's more or less what Ripple's willing to accept at this point because they said they're going to continue going. So what's going to happen, guys, in the remedies phase? Uh, I personally think, you know, the SEC's probably pretty done with this. I don't know if they have the fight in them at this point, uh, considering there's so many other lawsuits that they want to pursue so much in the crypto space. And they thought, you know, getting the big fish would really cinch the deal. But guys, Ripple has proven themselves, battled tooth and nail against the SEC and have ensured a win. And as John Deaton says, you know, even if they had to pay uh, $20 million, what's an extra 20 mil when they've already paid $150 million on legal fees? And guys, this bull run is going to be different because we have the clarity, because XRP is now relisted on US exchanges. I have a feeling XRP is going to top these levels. I mean, if it does a full fib uh, from this high here, guys, that means we're going to see an XRP worth over $7 per coin. And if we're still going by the old top, bringing it down to the trough of the market, that means there's still a possibility for an XRP to reach over $13 per coin. Not to mention all the real world utility that's brewing in the background, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.